MetaMask is a browser extension and app that describes itself as a crypto wallet and a gateway to blockchain apps. MetaMask helps you manage your private key, which controls your Ethereum address and facilitates crypto transactions and interacting with blockchain apps. Now, before I provide you with some important context, this is what we are looking at building. So a user can click login with MetaMask that's going to cause the MetaMask extension to pop up this window asking you to sign a specific message. We click sign. And now the user has been successfully authenticated with Firebase. So we're going to take a closer look at this process in just a moment, but first some more context. So the important thing to know for developers here is that if a user has the MetaMask extension installed, we will be able to access the window.ethereum object in our application to interact with MetaMask. So MetaMask is basically acting as the bridge between our app and the Ethereum blockchain, or in this case, the private key management tools that it provides. So I'm going to give you an overview of how I created a proof of concept using MetaMask to sign a user into Firebase with their Ethereum address. So this doesn't actually require interacting with the Ethereum blockchain. It just utilizes the private key management features that MetaMask provides in order to create a signature that proves that you own that particular Ethereum address. If you can prove you own that Ethereum address, then you can log into an app with that address as the unique identifier for your user account. The authentication process we will be discussing can be applied generically in many different contexts, but I'm going to specifically show you how to use this approach to authenticate a user with Firebase using a custom auth token, because obviously signing in with MetaMask is not currently one of the supported Firebase auth options. Okay, so we've already seen a basic overview of how this login process works. Now let's go through it again, but we will discuss it in a bit more detail. So before we begin, let's take a look at what is happening in Firebase. So what happens when the user logs in or attempts to log in for the first time is we're going to create a document in the user's collection with their Ethereum address as the unique identifier. Now at this stage, it doesn't matter whether they have actually authenticated for that address yet. We're just creating it to store this nonce field. Now, if you're not familiar with the term nonce, I think the easiest way to remember it is to think of it as standing for a number used only once. Basically, this is just a random number we're generating and we are going to send this to the user when they try to log in with that address as a sort of challenge to prove that they are the owner of that particular address. And we'll see exactly what that looks like in just a moment. Okay, so back to our application now. When a user clicks login with MetaMask, we use their current Ethereum address to request the nonce for that address from Firebase. So you can see here that we have retrieved that nonce, which is 853218 in this example. And now we're asking that the user signs this message with their private key. So MetaMask facilitates all of this for us. So all we need to do is click sign, and that's going to handle signing that message for us and sending it to Firebase where we are using a cloud function to ensure that the private key that signed that specific message is the one that controls the Ethereum address that they are trying to log in for. And if everything is all good, we create a custom auth token for the user, which is sent back to them, and then they can use that to sign in with Firebase. And the last important step here is that we update the nonce after they successfully sign in. You can see that we've changed that for that user now. So that next time they log in, they're going to have to sign a different challenge message. And the main reason for this is to stop replay attacks where someone could have captured that signed message and then just resend it back to the server to authenticate themselves as that user. So that's the general process of how it all works. Now let's dive into the code. So on the home page here, all I'm doing is calling a method called sign in with MetaMask. And that is going to trigger this whole authentication process for us. And I have that defined in an auth service. You can see the function here. And it is a little bit complex and has a few steps to it. But let's go through what each little section is doing here. It's following the same basic process that I just outlined. We're just going to have a look at the specific code that achieves that. So I'm using Angular and Observables here. So I'm basically just a 
switch mapping a whole bunch of different observables to go on from one step to the next. This process basically involves waiting for various things. So we want to make a HTTP request, wait for the result, then do something else, then do something else. So this is just a nice way to organize all of that. You don't have to structure it in this way if you don't want to. So the first thing we do is use this detect Ethereum provider method, which is provided to us through this MetaMask detect provider package. And basically this is just providing us with a way to check that MetaMask is actually installed and that that window.ethereum object is available. And if it is, we set it up on our own little Ethereum variable here. And once we have access to that, we call this request method and ask for permission to access the user's uh, Ethereum accounts. So the user will only need to do this once. The first time they go through this process, MetaMask is going to pop up and say that the website is requesting access to your Ethereum account and you can choose which account you want to use. An important thing to note here is that this doesn't provide full access to the user's Ethereum account. You're not going to be able to send transactions or anything like that unless you get further permission. So once we have access to the user's Ethereum address, we then move on to this step, which is to retrieve the nonce for that address. So this is basically just making a request to a cloud function we have set up that is going to retrieve that nonce from the user's collection for this specific address. Once we have that nonce, we then call the ethereum.request method again, but this time we ask them to sign that nonce. So we just use personal sign as the method. We convert that message to a hexadecimal format so that it can be displayed as the nice number that it is, not a weird looking uh, mutilated string. So once we have that message signed with that specific Ethereum address, we send it back to our server. In this case, again, it's a cloud function in Firebase, and this is going to accept the address they're trying to sign in for and that signed message. And then it's going to check that that is a valid signature for the specific nonce. And finally, we get to the last step, which is taking the token that this will return if it is a valid signature. And then we just call Firebase's sign in with custom token and provide that token to the method. And this down here is just a utility method for converting a string to hex format. Okay, so that's the general process of what is happening on the front end. Now let's take a look at the actual cloud functions themselves. So in our cloud functions, we have a get nonce to sign method, which we call in step two, I believe. And then we have our verify signed message, which we call in step four. And as well as that, we also have this to hex utility method that we're using as well. And another important thing to note here is that we are using the recover personal signature method from MetaMask ETH SIG util. And this is what is going to allow us to verify that signature that was provided. So let's first take a look at the get nonce to sign method. So there's quite a bit of boilerplate here just for a sort of typical cloud function where you have cores set up, we're checking that we're getting the expected method and uh, parameters sent through to the function. And then we get into the actual auth stuff. So what we're doing first is we're trying to get that user document for that specific address from our users collection. So if that already exists, then all we need to do is grab that nonce and send it back to the user that's trying to sign in. If that user document doesn't already exist, then we generate a new nonce. We create a user document in that user's collection using the Ethereum address as the ID for that document. We then set the nonce field to the nonce that we just generated on that user document and then we send the nonce back to the user. And then we have our verify signed message function. And again, in this one, we also have that typical sort of boilerplate uh, setting up our cloud function. And this function will accept the Ethereum address that they're trying to sign in with and that signed signature, the nonce that has been signed with the private key for that Ethereum address. And again, we get the nonce from our database we check that that user document with that nonce actually exists. Otherwise we uh, will error this out. And what we do once we have the signature that the user has provided and the nonce for the address that they're trying to sign in with, 
we use the recover personal signature method and we supply it with the existing nonce converted to that hexadecimal format and the signature that the user provided. Now what this will allow us to do is retrieve the actual Ethereum address that was used to create this signature. And this recovered address should match the address that they are claiming they want to log in with. And if it does match, that means that the address they use to sign the message is the same as the one that they're trying to log in with, which means that they do have ownership of that address. So if that all checks out, we then update that nonce in the database. So next time they try to log in, it is a different signed message that will be required. They can't just reuse the same message. We create the custom Firebase token, and then we send that back to them. And if the address didn't match, then we just send back a error status. And that is the entire login process. We can now confirm that that user owns that Ethereum address, or at least that they have the private key for that Ethereum address, which basically means they control it completely. That doesn't mean that someone can't lose their private key, but this does provide a very high level of confidence that the user is who they say they are. So I'm intending to turn this into a bit of a series as we've only just scratched the surface here. Next up, I'm planning on looking at how to use the browser in the status app to implement this same authentication process on mobile, and then possibly even looking into building an encrypted app using the user's Ethereum address, and then maybe even a full blown decentralized app using the Ethereum blockchain. So if you'd like to stick around for any of that, make sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you'd like to see a full write-up of this tutorial that goes into a lot more detail and also get access to the full source code, check out the link in the description. If that tutorial isn't available just yet, it should be out very soon. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.